We are also very lucky to have with us today Dr. Hani Benna, who comes from a medical background, but he's found his calling in community and humanitarian work. He's the founder and president of the Humanitarian Forum, which seeks to build bridges between Muslim and non-Muslim NGOs worldwide. He's also the co-founder uh, and former president of Islamic Relief Worldwide and International Relief and Development Charity Organization, which is familiar to many. And his humanitarian activities span over, mashallah, 30 strong years, through which he's shown his commitment to interfaith dialogue, community work and youth work. So without further ado, inshallah, we'll hand over to Dr. Herney, who is going to tell us a little bit about his experiences and the lessons that we can extract today from his experiences over the last 30 years and explain to us how we can create meaningful change. So over to you, Dr. Herney. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Thank you very much, uh, Sister Bushra, Sister Govan, Brother Omar and Sister Yasmin for inviting me to this meeting today is very important for me because whenever uh, a youth meeting is organized, I am ready to go and learn and listen to them. Today, in my first interaction, I will talk about uh, threats and warning for the young people, particularly knowing that I'm talking to people who are young, energetic, zealous, and have the drive and have the energy, and they would like to do things for tomorrow, yesterday. My warning is a few. That's why I'm starting with them. Then we can go to other points. First warning or red card that if we do not, if we do not, if we do not know our history, it is not a must, it is a compelling duty that each and every one of us must know his or her history, the history of his or her ummah, the history of the way Islam has been built within the community to serve the community, to save the community, and to drive the community and to make the community bring it out from the middle of the desert of no man's land to be the champion of civilization in the whole world and leading humanity. If we don't know our history and see my finger when I point with it like this, I'm just threatening each and every one. You will never be able to be understanding the contemporary life around you then to take this to the future. People who do not know the history, how it has been made before, will never be able to create the future for others and create the, the history for the future generation. This is number one. It's a fatal mistake. It's a fatal mistake. It's a fatal mistake. Number two, in a way, Arabic language is the top uncomparable to any other language on earth. And this is something most of the great scholars of Islam were not Arabs, but their mothers like you, Sister Govan, Sister Bushra, and Sister uh, Yasmin insisted that their children have been born in Central Asia from uh, Afghanistan, what we call it now, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and, and, and Iran, and, 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 to learn and master the Arabic language and to be the master of humanity in these subjects. Arabic language, in a very, in a very uh, frank way, cannot be compared to any other language because the proverbs and the metaphor of it standing, shining high above any other language. I'm not saying don't actually learn other languages, but master the Arabic language, particularly if you want to call yourself sheikh or imam or ustaz. And this is something that my third red card, my first red card is history. My second red card 
is the Arabic language. My third red card is calling ourselves names, which are not qualified for it. And I remember a discussion by Sheikh Rahmatullahi Muhammad al-Ghazali in Egypt. And this discussion was about nearly 60 years ago. And he was saying, young men and young women, especially men, and reading one or two books, and they call themselves ulama. On what ground? On what basis? Somebody, maybe 20 years ago, was trying to call me Ustaz. I said, you cannot call me Ustaz, because I am not Ustaz. Ustaziya, it means prof professorship of knowledge, mastership of experience, and interaction and direction. So please, don't, don't, don't call yourself these names, because it's deceiving more than directing. And this is my third red card. And my fourth red card is not, and this was my fight with the young Muslim groups in the 80s, is not respecting the elderly who do, who does, who do not speak the English language. Our parents and our grandparents. I hope this culture is changing nowadays. So my four red cards for us is on the table. If any one of us playing football and supporting, uh, I think Liverpool is playing now, isn't it? I think I don't know. I don't know what another stock would score because I'm not in the, in the football uh, thingy. Actually, if anyone does something wrong in the match, the referee will give him a red card. That means you are out. Four red cards for me today. This is my first warning. My second thing is our experience, as Sister Bush was talking about. I'm very happy to be shadowed, or to be shadowing. Sorry, I'm not saying to be shadowed, but to be shadowing Sister Govan and Brother uh, uh, Homer Salha. I used to work under him a long time ago, inshallah, and learn from him a lot. And uh, we started in the 80s creating what we call it nowadays humanitarian movement. 1984 was the birth of Muslim humanitarian movement in the whole West. Alhamdulillah, before that, it was a Palestinian issue only. It was some representative for Afghanistan to represent Afghan community, to raise funds for Afghanistan and some other issues on unorganized way. But the first re real response was in 1984, when we started the Islamic Caliph, 1985, when Muslim Aid came out. And then, now, alhamdulillah, we succeeded to create a movement which has more than 100 international Muslim humanitarian organizations in the country. But 84, we had one. Now we passed the 100. 84, we did not have budget. Now our budget in hundreds of millions of pounds, only from UK. And you did it through your parents who supported us and your grandparents who support us. Building a humanitarian movement is extremely easy because we play on the nerves and the emotion of people. So we succeeded and we are succeeding. In 2005, we started, or before 2005, we started talking about social movement, especially we declared this after 5-5 five, five when we were in the, uh, in the Lord, May Lord Mayor office, uh, Ken Livingston, we were donating, Islamic was donating half a million dollars for the ambulances for London Mayor uh, project at that time. I said, we, suck, we said, not I said, sorry, sorry to say, I to use the word I. You know, you listen to me, Bushra, sorry to say the word I. Okay. We said, we succeeded of creating humanitarian movement. Now, we have to create social movement. What do you mean by social movement? Is to respond to the needs 
of every individual in our community, the blind, the disabled, the elderly, the displaced, the homeless, the widows, the dogs for the blind people, the deaf, everyone. And this was the second movement which we should create, and it's your role now. And this started in 2005 to declare it publicly, and we're still fighting. COVID is one of the responses. The flooding everywhere in UK and in Europe is not only home sweet home, where my mother and father came from, Africa or Asia or Latin America, or, 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 no, it is also charity starts at home and this is the most difficult backbreaking movement that you need to do it because you are more equipped than somebody like myself when we started in the 80s we did not have a torch to light our road but we used our finger to make it a torch and we were telling people follow our finger and follow us in the middle of the darkness, the darkness. Because you, Bushra and Govan and Omar and uh, others, you as leaders should not follow the flow of others, but you should create the flow that others can follow you and let others to follow you. This is my message to you, Sister Bushra. I'm not blinking my eyes but I'm using my finger as a threat. One of my red cards is my finger. When you see my finger, be scared. The second point will be my red card. So the social movement is something we have to entrench ourselves into it because we as young people are a part of the society and we should nurture the society with our culture, with our values, with our vision, with our love, with our care, and with our morality. Should not be shy or ashamed of how we look because it's a creation of God. I'm black, I'm happy. I'm white, I'm happy. I'm tall, I'm happy. I'm short, I'm happy. So what? So what? And this is what I'm saying. I have to, I have to be extremely proud of all this, especially moving from the humanitarian response into the social response. This is what is actually from 2005 up till now. Who are you? It's my second or the third point in my first 15 minutes. We have a young man or a young woman to identify who am I? What is my role? Do I have a role to play in the society? I can measure my role, develop it, and direct people to help me towards my role. What is my identity? Do I have to create my identity? What is the composition and the characteristic, specific, the specific characteristic of my identity? The distinctive, the distinctive characteristics of my identity that made me very proud of it and made everybody else to follow an identity like my identity. What's my mission in life? Now we can see one of the smallest signs of, of, of the day of judgment, which is the sudden death. Sudden death take people who are very healthy, very young. Am I prepared? To meet Allah in the middle of the 20s or 30s, all of a sudden, when the death come to me, this is what I'm trying to remind myself in my role, my mission, my identity, and my direction. So these three uh, discussion points are for me to you to start with. I don't want to carry on because I know that at my 15 minutes, yes, we have one minute to go, isn't it, Sister Bushra? I will leave 
the, the, the most difficult challenge in the second part, which is the philosophy of thinking and the creation of ideology, which will be done by you. You know, I'm pointing my finger not to Brother Muhammad al faqih actually, but to Omar, to Govan, to Bushra, and to you, creating the philosophy of thinking and the direction of ideology and mentoring the generation to come. This is my second part, inshallah, after I listen to my Ustaz Omar Salha. Jazakumullah <laughs> khayran, Dr. Hani Banna. Plenty to think about, mashallah. Excellent. So, um, Dr. Hani Banna has shared with us some of his red cards, the, the uh, things to remember and the things to be mindful of for when we want to take things from the humanitarian to the social change. 